YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ain't Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. If you ever want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, special shout out to all of our Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids and if not, that's fine too. There's absolutely zero pressure. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all coming through literally every single day to talk Ravens. Every single day. And sometimes two or three times a day. There are a lot of conversations that we have about the Ravens on here, but I appreciate y'all being part of every last one of them. Team Keep It Clean, as we always do, we got some fire questions. Let's do it. Engraving Vato Loco. I had to look that up to make sure it was Team Keep It Clean because I ain't about to be out here cursing in Spanish. Anyway, first question came from my boy Jamie G. He said, Howdy from San Antonio. I don't know if this has been asked or not, but here I go. All right, let's see. As I was reviewing Ravens stats stacked up against the rest of the league, I noticed that we are among the worst at allowing deep passes. 30th in the league. Thinking of the personnel we have, I couldn't help but comparing the team pre Deshaun. And post Deshaun. Only three games sample from playing without. In the three games, we clearly can see an important difference in the yards and points allowed. This is actually really affected by how bad our defense was against the Dolphins. Granted, this was against weaker opponents, but we did not expect to receive as many points as we received from the weaker opponents we played. Like Lions, Raiders, Vikings, and seven games. Injuries may play a big factor and it could cloud this argument, but thus far. But stats say that things have been much better without Deshaun Elliott. There's no question that Deshaun is an amazing tackler, but that is not the only thing that matters in this game. He is a safety, after all. Strong, that is. And his main goal is to reduce yards and aim to diminish long plays. I am not someone that analyzes film, but I do notice trends, and these say a lot about the big picture. I am hating criticizing Deshaun as he is a player that I enjoy cheering for, but once we see otherwise, then I will stick to my analysis. I apologize for the long question. P.S. Throw the ball to Pookie for me. Appreciate it. Um... So, with or without Deshaun Elliott, um, I, I think due to the injuries, uh, due to how much the Ravens, you could tell they love Brandon Stevens. They love this guy. You could tell they loved him even before Deshaun Elliott got hurt. They love him. and it, But the question still remains. Well, I mean, not even the question, but it still stands that the Ravens do not have a true safety on the roster right now. True free safety, that is. Excuse me. So the, the, the Roman type of safety. Because not Greg Roman, but roaming the field. Um, but shout out to Giro anyway. Shout out to Gregory. Uh, but uh, Darius Washington out for the season, broken foot. Uh, Chuck Clark, strong safety. Deshaun Elliott out for the year, but he's also a box safety. Uh, Brandon Stevens, former running back. Then he was a former cornerback. And this is his first year playing Safety and boy, what what a first year to, to dive into being a safety when you get to the professional level. Um, so we don't really have that that truth. Uh, well, there's Geno Stone. Geno Stone would be one, but uh, the Ravens aren't really invested in Geno Stone like that. So, I mean, I, I guess I should have rephrased that. They don't really have a true free safety that's really gonna get playing time like that. Uh, so it's it's. It's a process. It's definitely a process. But uh, back to what you were saying about how uh, you feel like the um, the the Ravens have done better, and, and albeit against worse competition and whatnot, but better without Deshaun Elliott. I do think moving forward that the Ravens have to prepare for that life. Uh, I think they could if they want to. I think they could bring him back on a one-year deal. They could bring him back on a cheap one-year deal. Reason being because I don't think they would invest anything long-term into Deshaun Elliott because three out of the four years have ended on injury reserve. Um, but I do think if, like, for wherever he ends up going, even if it's not with the Ravens, I don't think it's going to be a long-term deal up front. I think it's going to be a one-year, can-you-stay-healthy type of deal. Uh, and then they'll see whatever team that may be, whether it's the Ravens or somebody else, then they'll see uh, from there. But um, let's let's see how the team does moving forward. Uh, because I know you said it was a small sample size, which it is without Deshaun Elliott. But let's see how they do moving forward against these better opponents. Like, again, the Browns. Uh, and they're going to play the Browns again. But then you got Steelers coming up this week. Steelers twice. You got Bengals again. 
You got Packers and Rams. So you really going to get to see uh, if they are better with or without. And even, say for instance, they are better with. It may not even necessarily just be a Deshaun Elliott thing. It could just be a wink thing. It could be a wink putting guys in better position down a stretch to make better plays. So we'll see soon. Next question came from my boy Mike. And shout out to you for being a patron. He said, I ain't great. And I hope you and the fam are good. Man, our Ravens are fighters for sure and have kept finding ways to win. I've noticed this defense has been playing better, especially Queen and Bowser. Shout out to Away as well. He has been balling for a rookie. I know this Ravens team has been extremely resilient, which could bode well for future success. Still, it would be nice, though, to have a chill, stress-free game. <laughs> It'd be nice, but I, I wouldn't expect it. Not from these Ravens. That's just not how they operate this year. At least not too much. Uh, he said, which two players, non-QB, do you think could be a spark for greater success to finish the rest of the season? Wow, that is a uh, great question. Um, one of those, and, and there's a lot of pressure being put on him, but it's who we were just talking about previously. I would say Brandon Stevens. Now, again, something that we keep saying, we got to remember, one, he is a rookie. Two, he is playing a brand new position that he has never played before. Going from running back to corner to safety, this is brand new. And again, him having to make that transition at the highest level of football, <laughs> that's a lot. But I would say Brandon Stevens, uh, because Brandon Stevens, as the safety, you're the last line of defense against the big plays. Well, if you are back there, if, if it's not one of them plays where Wink is blitzing everybody. But if, if, if you're back there, then, yeah, you are the last line of defense. So I would certainly say him. He would be a guy for sure. Um, somebody else, I would say Alejandro Villanueva. He would be a guy um, because he... It's been an up and down season for him, um, but when when it's bad for him, it's like it's really bad, and we see it like it's like ooh, ugh. so it, it would those would be the two that I would choose. That's a really good question. Next question came from Heather, and appreciate you being a patron as well. She said, "Hey, Graven, can you touch on what happened with that trick play in the Browns game where Cole Cap busted through to gain the first down? They did not give it to us. Why? I guess I didn't understand what happened there. There was some penalty. There, there was a penalty that was just." That whole, it was just a mess. And I, I think what, what was happening, no, no, it wasn't even a penalty. It was that they said that the Browns, uh, they hadn't had enough time to substitute their players in uh, when the Ravens were getting ready to run or when they, the Ravens actually ran that fake punt. So the refs, they stopped the play. They Oh, no, 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 that play didn't count because the Browns didn't have enough time to sub, sub their guys in. So that negated that play. And then I, something happened right right after that, too. But then the Ravens ended up getting it because the Browns had like a 12-minute on the field penalty afterwards. But that whole sequence was just a mess. Next question came from my guy, Cam. He said, hope you're doing well, Engraven. I got one question. I'm going to get straight to it. Why don't we use Bateman enough on passing plays? I see Bateman in for design run plays, which he's been doing a good job blocking all the time, but rarely ever for passing plays. And it makes me question the coaching a bit. I feel like Bateman has been our best receiver when in, but he just doesn't get enough looks. Time and time again, you see Bateman on the sideline for deep passing plays, even though he was a good deep receiver for the Minnesota game. Uh, I love, oh, for Minnesota, excuse me, for the, uh, what are they, the Badgers, I believe. Anyway, he said, I love Bateman and I want him to thrive, but there has to be change in the offense to do so. All right, so with Bateman, man, this guy is crazy because he can get open. Um, shout out to uh, Ravens for Dummies, Spencer. I got to have them on again, the, the, the boys from Baltimore beat down, Spencer and Jake Luke. Um, but anyway, he had, because uh, you know, the, the all 22 guys, when they get that film, it's like, ooh. It can be like, ooh, or it can be like, ooh. And th this was an ooh play. Um, in the Browns game, it was on a pass where Lamar, he threw it to Devin Duvernay in the end zone, but it ended up being incomplete, but it ended up being a holding call anyway. So even if it was complete, it wouldn't have counted. But on that same play, Rashad Bateman, oof, he was wide open for a touchdown. And initially when, um, when Spence showed the, uh, the play, because he put it on Twitter, when he, when he showed the play, I saw somebody in, in, in the end zone because the film, it wasn't crystal clear. It was clear enough, but I saw somebody in the end zone. I was like, oh, man, this is safety right there. But then I looked again, and I was like, oh, no, that was only a ref. So Rashad Bateman was wide open. So that is on Lamar Jackson to get him the ball when he is in. Not force it. But just look for him. 
Lamar got to do a better job of, of just seeing the field. And that, that's crazy because that's something that he really does well. But for these past couple of weeks, it's just been, it's been a problem. Um, so he got to step it up on that. And again, yeah, we're coaching. I, I don't know what it is. That, that confuses me. Because when Rashad Bateman first came on the scene, he's out there a lot. But then, like, you see him out there less and less, like, especially in the, uh, in the Browns game and in the set whole second half. And then in the Dolphins game, too. It's like the way that they were using him, or really the way that they weren't using him, was just super weird. Next question came from Bryce, and he sent it to the wrong email. But I'm going to give you one pass and one pass only. Anyway... He said, Aang Graven, quick question. Why is Brandon Stevens playing so much? He has been in 100% of snaps or close to it for a while now. I understand our secondary is thin, but he has one of the worst passer ratings allowed when targeted in the whole league. Not saying I dislike him as a player, but it seems that the coaching staff loves him when the stats aren't showing any success. Thanks. And, and you know what? I, I, I'll attribute him sending this to the wrong email because he's obviously been frustrated with Brandon Stevens. Um, but the reason why Brandon Stevens is playing um, so much is because Ravens original starting free safety uh, is out. Um, and somebody that they threw a third round pick for, um, he he's up. And they said from jump they want him to be a safety. They said that. Uh, and they are following through with that. So it's going to be some growing pains, again, since he's a rookie and new to the position. But the Ravens, like you said, and like I've said a lot too, they love him and he is going to be out there just going through it. And with that experience, he'll get better. So it's, it look like it's been rough. It's been a little rough here and there. He made some good plays now too. But with everything being thrown at him, because before – they would have him on the field here and there and whatnot. You see the 21 come in the game. Oh, okay, they go Brandon Stevens, a rookie. But that's when Deshaun Elliott was still healthy. But now, yeah, he, he's, it, he went from being a part-time player to a full-time. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's a lot to take on. So we just got to be patient with him uh, and let the, process, let the process happen. Next question, also sent to the wrong email. First and last chance, fellas. It came from Brendan. I guess it's when, you, when your name starts with a B, you send it to the wrong email. Anyway, you say, what's going on, Engraven? Hope you and your family are doing well. Do you think Lamar plays too much hero ball and subconsciously puts us in bad situations just for him to save us? Oh, that's a, a very interesting question. Subconsciously puts us in bad situations just for him to save us. Nah, no. Um, well, not, not intentionally on the, uh, the bad situations part, but you did say subconsciously, so that wouldn't be intentionally. Um, yeah, it happens sometimes. It does. But again, with Lamar, it's, it's always big play, big play, big play, big play, big play, big play, big play. And he, he just got to do a better job taking uh, the, the little stuff and, and a little more grinding it out through the air. Like running wise, he'll, he'll do them. The grind it out running wise, oh yeah. But through the air, he likes the big chunk plays, those fat plays, those huge plays where it's like, oh yeah, whoa, that was great. Um, but they got to do some more, a little bit dink and dunk. Just, just mix it up. Next question came from my guy Isaac. He said, what's up, Engraven? My question has to do with the Steelers and how Lamar plays against them. Usually Lamar doesn't fold under big time pressure games, and we've seen him make spectacular plays against them, but we've also seen Lamar make absolutely ugly picks in those Steelers games too. Yes, I remember the um, last year in the one at M&T Bank Stadium where it was intended for James Prochet, but it looked like it was intended for Spillane. I don't even think he's playing in this game, but still. And then there was another pick in that same game where it was intended for Patrick Ricard. And, oh, that, that linebacker, I think it's Highsmith, he, he just jumped it, and it was just a beautiful pick. I wish it wouldn't have happened to Lamar, but it did. Um, so, yeah, he, he definitely uh, – and then uh, in the red zone in that same game, Lamar fumbled. And I think – did we lose that fumble? I think we did. But, yeah, he, he definitely got uh, to step it up against – I mean, he's only played them twice. So – that's really a small sample size, but still, uh, this is Raven Steelers, so he got to bring it this coming Sunday. But anyway, back to his question. He said, if my phone will stop acting up. All right, there we go. He says, some days it feels like the Steelers defense has Lamar's number the same way that the Chiefs did. Should we be worried that the Steelers could sweep us the same way the Bengals swept him? <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it can always be a worry until it's not a worry anymore. And it's always possible until that possibility is eliminated. Um, so we just, again, the, the, the sample size is very small, 
We've seen him make some plays against the Steelers, and we've seen the Steelers make some plays against him, but it's only been two games. It's been, and, and that's it. It's been two games. Well, yeah, it's been two games. So, because he played them once in 2019, and then he played them, and then the second game he sat out, because that was week 17, and then he played them once in 2020, then the second game he sat out because uh, of COVID. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, I, I, I know he has, when he's played the Steelers, there's been some yikes in there, but those games don't really, like, worry me like that because, again, he's... He hasn't played them so many times. Like, he's played the Chiefs more than he's played the Steelers. Think about that. See, a lot of people really questioning Brandon Stevens this episode. Next question also came from my guy, Isaac. He said, sorry for the double question, but I had to get another one in real quick. How are we feeling about Brandon Stevens so far? I've been impressed so far with his ability to read run games, which showed itself in the Browns game that we saw this past weekend. With that said, coverage has been decent overall. He's picked up our scheme relatively quickly. I ask this also because this could have major implications in the offseason. Will we keep a young talent on a cheap deal or do we bite on resigning Deshaun Elliott who sadly cannot stay healthy we'll love to know your thoughts on this much love and look at that this is uh pretty much everything that we have been talking about before earlier with um Deshaun Elliott so we, we we spoke about that already with the contract so we don't need to touch on that again uh but with Brandon Stevens you made a good point that he uh he's picked up the scheme relatively quickly now, that is, um, that's very interesting given how difficult this scheme is known to be uh, and him being a rookie. So that definitely uh, shows that he's a student of the game. Uh, and if he's dissecting and diagnosing plays, that shows that he's even more of a student of the game. So that's a beautiful thing. So that can only help with his ascension as an NFL safety uh, for the Ravens. So that's a good thing. Um, for me personally, I, I felt he's been all right. Uh, I felt he definitely missed some plays, but again, I just, I always got to remember this, this is a rookie in a brand, literally a brand new position. Um, and I know a lot of times Ravens, they, they will play guys out of position. Um, and then when those guys struggle, the Ravens will be scratching their heads like, oh, hey, why, why is this guy struggling? What, what do we do wrong? Well, you didn't play him where he had been playing that for his collegiate career. You try to do an experiment, but. It's all good. Uh, he uh, he definitely shows some potential. So we hope that that potential can just continue to grow and he can continue to just blossom into this great safety. Next question came for questions came from Gray. I say greetings. Two questions with our defense finally coming together. Who's the keystone on our defense coming into the year? I thought Chuck Clark and he's played very well overall. Chuck Clark has been all right. He's been all right. Uh, and he said, however, Calais Campbell and Bowser have both played outstanding this year. Buying salvage our inside linebacker corp and away has been a welcome surprise. Now, who's the Ravens defensive MVP so far? Oh, that's a really good question. Who's the Ravens defensive MVP so far? Um, I'd probably say Juice Man because he is certainly uh, the most valuable Peters. Uh, anyway, now I... um. Mm, Hmm. That is a tough one. That is that is wow. That's really tough. Cause do we do we even have one? Cause yeah, Bowser been playing real good recently. Patrick Patrick Queen he done been coming along a lot better. Um, Calais Campbell has just been so consistent. So I guess Calais Campbell Calais Campbell could be one. Um. Yeah, if I, yeah, if I got to go one, I got to go Calais Campbell. I just feel like there just really hasn't been just one, like, dominant from jump. To, I mean, away has been really good. Um, and he's made he made some big-time plays as well. Uh, but so I don't I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. That's a really, really good question. But the second question, he said, should Harbaugh call for more trick plays from special teams and or the offense? I've only seen one. The penalty-ridden fake punt in the second quarter against the Browns. Personally, I'm all for it. It brings an element of unpredictability back. He said, have a great day. Yes, I, I, I think so. Um, not that you have to do it again. You don't have to do it all the time. It doesn't have to be something that you do once or twice every single game, every single quarter. No. But you can pull some out every now and then because it just gives you a nice little spark. It's something different. It, it gives your team life, especially if your offense is walking around and they, they aren't doing anything. Yeah, you, you sprinkle it in here and there. Like, again, like they did in the Browns game. You see, like, it worked, but it, because of the refs and the Browns, it, it didn't work, but it worked. So, 
Keep running that. Next question came from Soft Strike. He said, Ain't Graven, hope you had a good weekend. Now, what do you think about the defense lately? Personally, I think they're playing great. Do you think Patrick Queen and Tyus Bowser are playing on an elite level? Uh, well, Patrick Queen, he's just been playing a lot more confident. And that, that confidence has been showing uh, on the field for sure. We all see it. We, we all see it. Uh, and we love it, too. So shout out to Patrick Queen. I uh, know Wink did say he's actually been playing some Will and Mike linebacker. So he hasn't just been the Batman, he, or he hasn't just been the Robin, but he's been the Batman as well. So he said he'd been playing both positions. So that confidence, confidence is everything, man. So he, it, took, it took him being demoted or moved, whatever you want to call it, but it took him being demoted to where it's like, hold up, okay, let me, uh, okay, let me readjust myself. Let me, uh, and, and, and have him focus on some things a, little, a lot more than he was before. Instead of having all these things to do, da -da 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 -da, he gets to focus on less so he can really master that. Um, but he's, yeah, he's been playing a lot better, a whole lot better. And Bow Bowser, he's been showing out too. So, yeah, both of those guys are playing on another level. And the defense just overall as a whole, um, they, they've been playing better too. Just the, the tackling has gotten so much better. Uh, and just the aggression and, and them just attacking the ball. Next question came from Akeem. He said, why we need a qualified offensive coordinator to take over? What's going on in Graven? i am been a diehard Ravens fan from day one when we had Vinny Testaverde, Michael Jackson, Derek Alexander, Ernest Biner, and others. With the team's calling card being on defense, I know what a real pro-style offense has looked like outside of Lamar Jackson's era here in Baltimore. And it's mostly been outside of John Harbaugh's friends at offensive coordinator. Case in point, the 13-3 year with Steve McNair's play-action offense under Brian Billick and the Jamal Lewis rushing attack. The other outstanding offensive year being under Gary Kubiak, where he brought his own entire coaching staff and refused to accept any of Coach Harbaugh's unqualified staff. <laughs> Gary Kubiak brought a fantastic zone blocking scheme to Baltimore and made the game so easy for Flacco, helping him have one of the few statistically good years he's ever had in his career here under Harbaugh. Forgive me for my lengthy response, but I must shine the spotlight on some very atrocious realities. That is the Greg Roman experience. Uh, and then I would like to know, is there not a cause based on th these facts to get this man out of, up out of here uh, and get Lamar a real offensive coordinator? One who will do their job and be an asset to Lamar's success and not a liability. Ooh, you must be a lawyer. If you're not a lawyer now, I know you're going to be one in the next two to three years. He said, Greg Roman, offensive coordinator patterns. Frequent seven-step drops with a horrible offensive line. Why? So, seven-step drops where the quarterback snaps the ball. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you look for your receiver, whoever that may be. Now, um, and what he's saying is it, with Lamar having to do that with a bad offensive line, him dropping back, the further he drops back, the longer the offensive line got to block, the longer these, these long-developing deep plays, they got to they gotta develop, but you got a bad offensive line, so... That, that's why Lamar ends up running for his life and nobody's open because they're still running their route. They're like, all right, I got to run this route. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let me try to break off this cornerback. Meanwhile, Lamar's already running for his life back there. So that's the first one. Then he said, Murray is very ineffective but keeps getting carries. Why? Self-explanatory for that one. I don't need no, don't need no breakdown for that. Uh, why receivers frequently running their routes in the same area? Why? That's uh, also self-explanatory. Uh, if a wide receiver runs on a route, but there's another wide receiver on the same team in the same area, you're not really opening up the field. So, and he said, lied to the fan base and said Lamar would be under center more this year and the offense would be more involved this year, only for it to look like the exact same and Lamar only be under center once a game for a red zone handoff. Literally, why? I gotta tell the truth, Greg. He said, 30 plus zero blitzes to zero answers. Why? Oh, that one. Oh. I, that, that one was a big yikes right there. It was just a mess. Um, using the fullback like... <laughs> I love this one. Using the fullback like a wide receiver and a talented speedster in Duvernay as a jet sweep specialist. Why? The fullback, the wide receiver part. That, like, yeah, that... Uh, every time I see it, it makes me cringe. When they line Patrick Ricard up at wide receiver and they, they, they like, come out in these little empty sets and whatnot. And Patrick Ricard... I was just like, oh, what are you doing, man? You're wasting a spot, but... Anyway, knows how to kill drives, calling the most goofiest pitch option plays on second and long. Why? Oh, yes, the, 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 the pitch, those option plays. They, I, I haven't really been feeling them this year. And they just, 
this it just no this doesn't seem like the team for those they just don't they tried it with Lamar to Le'Veon Bell they tried it with Lamar to Devontae Freeman um I think they might have done one to Tyson Williams early on but definitely the other two this that's not it man Got Rashad Bateman, who is extremely talented with much better hands than Hollywood, doing a second half disappearing acting games. Why? That was, that was frustrating. And and I just I still don't understand why that happened, how that happened. The reason that it happened, it just it didn't make any sense whatsoever. So yeah, you 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 spot on with all this. Shout out to Graven.